Fathers, what did your daughter's boyfriend do for you to hate or love him? My daughter struggles with challenges. She's always been a bit different in our family. She's the one daughter who's closer to me than to her mom. She prefers staying in and listening to metal music over going out with her sisters, and she'd rather go on a hike than go shopping. Sometimes she wants and does things that I just don't understand. I think a lot of her unique traits come from her challenges, and that can be tough to deal with at times. It means she has special needs, and it takes a certain type of person to handle that in the right way. She's my little girl, and I want the best for her. Then this scruffy-faced, long-haired young man came into the picture. When you talk to him, it feels like you're talking to Plato himself, but his performance in school isn't very good. He seems to have a poor work ethic, from what I can tell. He's smart, but I worried he wouldn't have any real-world success. But I paid attention because my daughter isn't stupid, and I figured there must be a reason she chose this guy. It didn't take long for me to see why. He understands her in a way that seems almost magical. Even on her worst days, she's laughing not long after she's with him. It's clear he loves her, just by the way he talks to her and looks at her. Not in a bad way, but with genuine care. I asked why she chose him, and she explained that for some reason she feels calm and happy around him. She said that even when they first met, she could talk to him for hours without getting tired, unlike most people, where she'd feel drained after just a few minutes. They'd have this special dynamic between them. She's practical and down-to-earth, while he's thoughtful and abstract, with his head in the clouds. Together, they balance each other out. In fact, the way they interact reminds me of an old married couple. There's just something really likable about the guy. When you talk to him, you sense honesty, integrity, and a good amount of idealism. He talks about wanting to make the world a better place, and the way he says it makes you almost believe he could actually do it. So, maybe against my better judgment, I gave him my approval. My daughter wouldn't be happy with someone too practical. She needs someone like him makes her happy, and I think that's what's best for her. You should save the story and tell it during their wedding. Story two. Pah, I'm so late to this, but I'm going to comment anyway. Just the daughter, though. My dad recently passed away of cancer, but he loved my boyfriend. In his final year. I think it's worth mentioning, because of the two years prior to that, when my dad saw boyfriends, specifically this one, as only an obstacle to his daughter's eventual White House run or best-selling novels. Dad had high hopes for me. My boyfriend... Came over to hang out with him every day after work to give me, stuck at work until five, peace of mind. Surprised me by shaving dad's head after I'd been commenting that the chemo was making his hair do crazy things. Helped me get dad down the excruciating stairs into appointments daily. Helped me weigh the decisions of hospice or keeping him at home with me alone. It was getting to be too much. Supported my decision to keep him at home even though he felt hospice would be better for me. Was the first one there to help me when my dad could no longer control his body and would have accidents. Helped me with that without even blinking. Kept track of how much I was sleeping and came over insisting I go nap regularly. Called me in the end anytime he was with my dad and he was having a more lucid moment and I couldn't be there. Assured my dad constantly that I didn't need anyone to take care of me after he was gone, but that he would watch after me for him forever. Recorded himself asking my dad for permission to marry me and insists I only get to listen to it on the day of her wedding. Held my hand during the funeral. Helped me learn how to live a normal life again. My dad was so worried about leaving such a young daughter behind, but... He told me he felt a little better about it, knowing I'd have a guy like that to watch out for me in my darkest times. And it doesn't get much darker than losing your best friend to cancer. Love to all you dads. Story 3 My youngest son has a type of congenital myopathy that makes him very weak. While he can walk, he can't run or jump and falls down a lot. Needless to say, he finds this very humiliating. We were at a restaurant and my son was standing next to me with untied shoelaces. Unfortunately, he tripped and, due to his weakness... Could not catch himself, falling down in the middle of a crowded restaurant. My daughter's boyfriend, without missing a beat, immediately lay down next to him on the floor and asked him, How's it going down there? And otherwise made some small talk to ease some of my son's embarrassment. My son is embarrassed and mortified when anyone helps him or otherwise fusses over him when this happens. Anyone walking into the room or looking over to see what the fuss was about saw two teenagers acting like goofs rather than one helping another one get off the floor after falling. When my daughter's boyfriend then jumped up and helped him up, it looked much more natural. He really did, in an instant, save my son a great deal of embarrassment. I realize it's tough to understand. He has always treated my son like his little brother, but that selfless act was unforgettable. Needless to say, I've loved him like a son ever since. Story 4 My ex-girlfriend's stepdad is probably one of the best people I know. He welcomed me into their family when I was struggling with finances and working two jobs. They were upper middle class with a bit of disposable income and they fed me pretty often, so I always wanted to help where I could. Chores, moving, watching the house, errands. It's a family of four very emotional females and him. Gotta be stressful. 
He was a networking engineer and knew my love for computers. Also a huge nerd like myself. Weird movies, video games, a whole lot of things his four female housemates didn't share a passion for. He'd invite me to his work to talk and even try to get me hired with him. Ultimately, he is the reason I went back to school. The relationship didn't work out. One night he picked me up to talk. He convinced me not to go back to her and dropped a lot of information on me about who she really was. At this point, she had already cheated on me, but for him to open my eyes about his stepdaughter so that I could move on in my life and find someone better was amazing. We still meet. She has no idea, but we play Destiny and Halo when we can online. I move into my own place in a week, and I honestly am wrestling with the idea of inviting him over for a break from that to watch Volcano High. The biggest thing that told me he cared about me was this. You care about her. You see it every day, and she couldn't care less. Nothing will be enough for her, and I don't want that misery for you. You deserve to be happy and appreciated. I've been trying to tell you for a while. She isn't going to work with you. Story 5 I raised my sister as my daughter, so I don't know if mine counts. My little sister has dated some serious fools in the past. She actually had to break up with one because he literally had no personality. None. That's the only reason she broke up with him. After a few months, she found it creepy that there was literally nothing special about who he was. But she always finds something. So I really hated almost all of them. Except Ricky. Ricky was like a 1950s greaser that just bopped into modern day. He even played Kaneki in Greece at their high school. It wasn't just a handsome young man. He was beautiful inside and out. And he was sensitive. My sister had never been with a truly sweet kid before. He cared for her like no other human could. They were just instant. The first day they were together, it was like they had always been. Ricky isn't going to live to an old age. He had Lyme or something for several months as a kid before his dad finally took him to a doctor. He's okay now, but neurological problems are going to happen when he gets to about 50. So he doesn't feel like he has time to waste on trivial relationships. He was honest with me about it because he was thinking about a whole life with my sister. So he wanted me to know what that meant. He built his own car from just a VW bug shell and chassis, and when he finished, he built one for my sister. It was a 1969 white convertible bug. So beautiful. I already liked the kid as a person. I mean, I invited him over to my house as much as my sister did. I considered this young kid to be my friend. I was sure that even though they were just finishing high school, they were going to be husband and wife within the next few years. And I was thrilled. Then my little sister had an accident. I was at a party he couldn't go to that night because he had schoolwork. It was so hard. He blamed himself. They never recovered from it. He stayed by her until the very end, but she went into some heavy emotional challenges. She started doing bad habits, drinking, and she cheated on him. A lot. My little sister wasn't the same. He forgave her for everything, every time. He knew it was her dealing with the event, which is true, but she couldn't forgive herself for what she was doing to him, and ended it. He was heartbroken and had to talk him out of <laughs> His sister was his world. I still have Ricky's number. I gave him a car recently that I knew he could fix and sell. My dog cried when she saw him and wouldn't leave his lap while squealing with happiness. She's a German Shepherd, so she isn't little. After about six years of his absence, I think she liked him more than even me. I don't expect that they'll ever get back together. Too much pain it wasn't either one's fault. But I've contacted him about cars a few times. I'm actually going to be taking him for a drink soon, since I missed his 21st by a few years. His livable life is halfway over, and last I saw him, I noticed a tremble in his hands. He's still Ricky. He's still amazing. He still loves my sister. I still miss him all the time. Story 6. Bad story. I wanted to be a good boyfriend, so I brought pink roses, which are my girlfriend's favorite color, and I picked her up for a date. She loved the roses, put them in a vase, and left the vase on the kitchen counter before we went out. When I dropped her off a little before curfew because I really wanted her parents to trust me, her dad was very cold to me. I couldn't figure out why. I thought I had done everything right. I left as quickly as I could because it was clear I had done something wrong. She called me 30 minutes later to explain. Her mom had come home, saw the roses, and thought they were a gift from her dad. She was happy because he never does romantic things like that for her. When he came home, she thanked him for the thoughtful gesture, but he had no idea what she was talking about. An argument started because of the misunderstanding. So I ended up in trouble for accidentally showing up her dad and ruining his evening, all because I wanted to be a good guy. Good story. This is about a different girlfriend and her dad. We met at university and we lived in different towns. I was able to borrow my dad's car for the weekend, which was a big deal, so I could drive out to see her. We had been sending texts for two to three months, so we were both pretty excited to see each other. I was invited to stay over at her place. It was around 9.30 p.m. and my girlfriend and I were hanging out downstairs in the basement. Her dad's computer was down there, so he was working on something. 
Suddenly, he seemed to remember what it was like to be young. Out of nowhere, he stood up and said, I guess it's time for bed, and just walked out of the room without saying another word. The sun was still up. I'm not sure what it did to make him like me enough to basically give me the green light to be with his daughter, but it was a really cool move on his part. Story 7. My daughter was about to start graduate school, and her boyfriend was getting ready to go to basic training in a state that was two states away from us. Two months after she visited him, she came back wearing an engagement ring. When he finished basic training, his first job was in a place that was very far away. He told her that it would be better for her to stay in school and finish her studies instead of quitting to be with him. He believed that it would be hard for a short time, but would be better for them in the long run. He flew home during Christmas for a simple wedding at the courthouse. Then, when she graduated, the military paid for her to move and join him because spouses get benefits, but fiancés do not. Now, they are almost at their fifth wedding anniversary and are trying to have their first baby. I'm very happy for her. Story 8 I'm really worried about my daughter because I think she's in a very emotionally mistreating relationship. When she was just living with her current husband, she came to visit me and we went shopping together. They live about an hour away from me. A little while later, she stopped by my work and she was crying. Her husband had called her and told her to come home right away because he was hungry and he didn't care about the plans she had made. She said, I never get to do anything for myself. And that made me very sad because no parent would want their child to feel that way. A few hours later, I finished work and called her to check if she was okay. Her husband was listening in when I told her that I thought his behavior was selfish. He got very angry and started yelling at me, using bad language, and even threatened to have me arrested if I ever went to their house. It's been five years since then, and I still dislike him with all my heart. Story 9 This is the story of how I won over my girlfriend's father the first time we met. My girlfriend and I had been dating for a while, so it was time for me to meet her family. This is usually a bit scary, even when you're in your 20s. During dinner, her dad started complaining about his phone. He was upset with a new technology and the phone company, saying things like, Back in my day, phones just worked. It turned out his touchscreen wasn't working. He had a Windows 8 phone, which wasn't a big surprise, and the company told him he'd have to come in and pay $200 to get it fixed. My girlfriend mentioned that I knew a bit about tech, which often means you get asked to fix things for family, friends, neighbors, and even strangers in a grocery line. So she suggested to take a look at his phone. I said, no problem. Still trying to make a good impression. I quickly looked up the solution on Google and found out which keys to press to do a soft reset on his phone. It worked perfectly. The best part was when her dad turned to me and said, you can come over anytime you want to drink and watch hockey in the big screen. Story 10. Girlfriend in question here. The two of them climbed Mount Doom together. As an only child, my parents have always been cool with me bringing friends on holiday with me. We were going to New Zealand for a week. So my significant other came with us, even though it wasn't long after we started dating. My dad is the really athletic type. My mother and I really aren't, so normally on family holidays, dad would be off mountain climbing and bike riding and stuff like that on his own. He always encouraged me to go with him, but it wasn't really my thing. But my significant other is really athletic. So on this occasion, they went up climbing on one of the local mounds, which some of the Mount Doom scenes were filmed on. They got on really well together, and my dad really liked having the company of someone who enjoyed it as much as he did. I wasn't sure if climbing Mount Doom together was a metaphor or if they'd actually climbed it together. Could have gone either way there. Story 11. I would say that my girlfriend's father likes me. The first time I met him, I was driving over to pick up my girlfriend to go to the movies. I pulled into the driveway and the garage door was open. Inside, there was a Mustang with parts scattered everywhere. And a man covered in oil and grease was struggling underneath the car. He was trying to unbolt something but was having a hard time holding the part and using the ratchet at the same time. I noticed his struggle and decided to help him. I thought I would give him a hand and get up and meet my girlfriend so we could go out, but we ended up getting along really well, and I lost track of time. Before I knew it, two hours had passed. During that time, a girlfriend came out to find me, working with her dad underneath the car. She was okay with skipping the movie day because she saw that I was enjoying myself, and her dad was happy to have the help. She brought us some sandwiches and sweet tea. I plan to marry this girl, and I hope that one day, our car will belong to both of us. Story 12 My wife passed away whilst giving birth to her daughter. So, naturally, my daughter and I are very close. From a young age, she would spend her spare time volunteering to help children who were ill, and as she is a musician, she would also teach the children at the hospital I work at how to play the piano and guitar. Along with her kindness, she's the most beautiful young woman I've ever laid my eyes on. She has the sweetest smile and her mother's big blue eyes. When she brought home this scruffy-looking guy who hadn't done well in school, who was unemployed and trying to make his band successful, I didn't like him at all. I'm very sorry if I offend anybody, but I just couldn't understand the attraction she had to him and hoped it would fade into nothing. She could do better. About a year into their relationship, my daughter discovered that she was pregnant. My heart sank. 
Not because I didn't want a grandchild, but because I knew she hadn't planned it and I knew she was too kind to ever consider an alternative to keeping it. Her boyfriend approached me one evening shortly after the pregnancy was announced with a bottle of drink and asked if we could talk. I accepted the offer and we sat down and had her drink together. He confessed that he was scared to have a child, but how he had already started saving money and how he'd start looking for a job. He explained how he knew that he wasn't good enough for my daughter, but that he loved her with all of his heart and wanted to support her in her choice, even if that meant throwing away his music dreams. I will admit we both got very buzzed and ended up getting along well. This boy I had first judged was actually a very nice, warm gentleman who simply wanted the best for my daughter and their future child. That was good enough for me. So I invited him to live with us and got him a job working at the same hospital I worked for. Today I have two grandchildren and my daughter and future son-in-law are getting hatched next weekend. Story 13. Well, I'm actually the boyfriend that the dad didn't like. When I first met my girlfriend's dad, he had a long weekend. We didn't want to disturb him, so we went and watched movies in her room. Me knowing dad worries left the door completely open. We watched movies until maybe 10.30, at which time her dad called her into the living room. It was apparently time for me to leave, and she said he put it somewhere sternly. I put on my shoes, headed out, but he was already off to bed. The next weekend, they were having a water carnival in their town, a yearly event, and I showed up. I saw him again and said I was sorry. I lost track of time. I wasn't planning on staying so late, and it wasn't my intention to disrespect him. I asked if there was anything I could do to make it up to him. The look on his face changed. He smiled a bit and said you can help me make the burgers for all these folks. And we did. Story 14. My ex-girlfriend's dad had one of those big 1990s Dodge Cummins trucks. He would coil roll every car that was behind him, sending a thick black cloud of diesel smoke over everything in his path. One day in front of my girlfriend, he was making fun of my truck, which runs on gasoline, because it couldn't blow smoke like his. I simply asked, why is that cool? He stumbled over his words and gave me a look that showed he was angry but had nothing to say. He finally came back with something like, you're just jealous. But by then, I had already listed all the negatives of modifying a truck to do coal rolling. I talked about the impact and torque, gas mileage, and even said I thought it was classless and childish. The fact that I shut him up while his daughter was holding my arm clearly bothered him. He had no response to what I said. After that, he never talked to me again. I saw him at barbecues, weddings, and church, but <laughs> he never spoke to me. About six months later, he bought a Jeep. <laughs> Salty old man. Anyways, if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button for more videos like this. Story 15. I'm the son-in-law, not the father. My father-in-law likes me, and I think it's because I can relate to him more than his other children can. He's very successful. He's a well-paid manager in a large healthcare supply company. His kids went to private schools and they lived in big houses in the suburbs. For some reason, his first two kids, both boys, haven't achieved much in life. They're both 30 years old and work as cashiers at Publix. There's nothing wrong with that job, but it's not what he expected from them. They're also both still pretty immature. Neither is married, and when they're with him, he still has to parent them a lot. My wife and I were Facebook friends through a mutual friend before we actually met in person. One day, she told her dad about how she knew this guy on Facebook who was doing some interesting things. At the time, I was in graduate school and just posted some information about my work. He jokingly suggested that she should get to know me better. Five years later, we're married. I believe he likes me because when their family gets together, he and I talk about business and science. Meanwhile, he has to remind his sons that jokes and chewing with your mouth open are an appropriate and polite company. Story 16. I feel like my girlfriend's father hates me for many reasons. The main one being that I exist. He and his wife are the kind of Christians who made their oldest son marry a woman who treats him badly every day because she got pregnant. They not only made them get married, but also rushed the wedding so their reputation in their church wouldn't be hurt by a baby born outside of marriage. Now about me. I'm not religious and neither is my girlfriend, partly because of her parents. When we first met, I was in an SKA band and was planning to go on tour and make a name for myself. I didn't have a real job or any education beyond high school. I had a lot of tattoos that people could see. A beard and my ears were stretched. I also had long hair that went halfway down my back. I was a big fan of playing disc golf. They moved their daughter from their hometown to mine so we could be closer to each other. And I got their daughter, my girlfriend, pregnant. I just started working as a service technician for a small company because I've always been good with my hands. Did that change your father's opinion of me? No. He's a commercial pilot who earns over $100,000 a year. I worked really hard to earn a good wage. Cut my hair, took out my gauges, and now I'm the service foreman for the company. The older owner has told me that I'm being trained to run the whole business so I can take over when he retires. But her father is still not impressed. We've been together for four years. Her daughter was born in 2014, and my girlfriend stays at home with her while I support our family and pay all the bills and rent. We're planning to get married this spring. He can think poorly of me if he wants to, because 
His old-fashioned opinions and views on the world don't matter to either of us. I'm definitely not going anywhere because I love my soon-to-be wife and my daughter more than anything in the world. So yeah, he hates me, but I don't care. Story 17. My father didn't like my now husband until one night about a month before our wedding. We were all in my parents' house watching a movie around 10 p.m. It was raining very hard, so my father went downstairs to check the basement. He found out that a sump pump had stopped working. Water was coming in quickly. My parents' basement had a lot of valuable things in it. My parents had many of their belongings down there. And my grandmother had just moved into a nursing home, so all of her furniture was there too. I was also between apartments at the time because we were getting married and buying a condo, which was happening within a week of each other, about a month away. Almost everything I owned was in that basement as well. My father started to panic. He didn't know what to do and was just getting very upset. My fiancé stayed calm and started telling everyone what to do. He asked my mom to find a 24-hour plumber in the phone book. He asked me to help him move things from the wet parts of the basement to the dry parts. For things we couldn't move away from the water, he found unimportant items like scrap wood and used them to raise the important things. By the end of the night, where everything was fixed and the pump was working again to drain the water, we had only lost one $30 IKEA coffee table. We had chosen to let that get wet to save other things. From that day on, my father's opinion of my fiancé changed a lot for the better. Story 18 our father passed away when my sister and I were young. As the brother, I guess it's my duty, along with my mother, to approve the people my sister dates. A bit of background. My sister has had some really bad relationships in the past, but she took a break from dating for a while to finish her second degree. About a year before she graduated, a friend and I were talking with his cousin, who is also a friend of mine, about introducing him to my sister. Things didn't go well, and I was glad my sister was going to stay focused on her studies. I let it go. She had been sober for several years, and he was a drinker. They just didn't seem to fit together. I learned a lot about everyone involved during that time. Six months went by and I was going to a metal concert with a buddy, his wife, and the same friend of mine. When I mentioned the bands to my sister, she got really excited and asked if I would take her to the concert as a birthday gift. I agreed and we all went. This time, they got along, which made me angry because I'd learned more about him, friend or not. Within a week, she'd moved out of her house without talking to anyone about what was going on and she stopped attending her classes within two months. I had very strong opinions about all of it. How did my perception change? Her financial aid was gone because she withdrew from school at a bad time. He was working full-time in a warehouse and he paid for her books and classes himself. They got pregnant after she graduated and he supported her so she could stay home with a baby for the entire first year. They're now expecting their second child in October and they just bought a house with his income. She's a chemical engineer and he works in a normal warehouse. The way he supports her, Knowing how much you could contribute to their lives financially is something I admire about him and his choices to do what he's supposed to do. I believe she'll get back on her feet soon enough, and I personally think he'll deserve just as much credit for that. He's working in a warehouse as a worker and they bought a house? On his salary alone? Subprime loan much? Story 19. My wife and I let our daughter borrow my wife's car to go to work. One night there was a heavy rainstorm the street in front of their apartment started to flood. Her daughter called us panicking because the street was flooding and she didn't know what to do. So my wife and I rushed over to help. When we got there, the street was flooded and my wife's car was stuck in the middle of the street with the water rising. The water was so high that the car wouldn't start, and the back inside of the car was starting to fill with water. My daughter and I pushed the car out of the water to a spot with higher ground, but one side of the inside of my wife's car was already flooded. Her husband stayed inside the whole time and wouldn't come out to help us. My daughter loves him, so I try to put up with him, but whenever my son and I talk about my daughter's husband... We call him the lazy. Story 20. My girlfriend got a job offer in her hometown, which is a few states away from where we live. She moved back in with her parents for now. We decided to do a long-distance relationship and she wanted some time apart, but she asked me to visit her for the weekend in two weeks. Since she moved about a month and a half ago, every time she mentions my name to her dad, he makes sure to say how great of a guy I am. When he found out I was coming to visit, he called a friend and got us a free hotel room in the city for Saturday night. He also invited me to stay at their house on Sunday night. Every time her dad was in our city for business or when we visited her parents, he and I would talk about sports and business while enjoying a glass of drink. With any other of my exes, I never really got along with her father as like he was a buddy of mine. I don't know how things will turn out with my girlfriend and me, but I know that if I ever need help finding a job, her dad would be willing to help me right away. He's a great guy, and I hope I get to hang out with him for many years to come. Story 21. This isn't about my daughter. She's my roommate's daughter, but we're very close and I consider her like my own daughter because I've been with him for a while. Her boyfriend is just dumb. He's a rebound from her ex-girlfriend who left her because she needed time to figure out who she was. 
that made my roommate's daughter think being not straight was wrong, so she got a boyfriend and says she's sort of bi. It works. This makes me really angry because it's clear that losing her girlfriend broke her spirit. Her stepdad is against anything that isn't straight, so the only support she really has is from me and her father. Besides being dumber than a box of rocks, he's also super arrogant. The first day he met us, he walked into our house, ignored my roommate's attempt to greet him, and just opened our fridge. He looked through it and said there was nothing in it and slammed the door. You might think there's something good about him, but <laughs> you'd be wrong. The daughter came to me on Saturday, crying because she didn't know what to do. She was talking to him on the phone and the topic of her being bi came up. He asked if that was still a thing because he thought he had cured her of it, since he doesn't want her to go to hell. I told her that if she's going to hell, then I'll be joining her. I shared a quote from Marcus Aurelius with her. Live a good life. If there are gods and they're just, they will not care how devout you've been, but we'll welcome you based on the virtues you have lived by. If they're gods, but unjust, then you should not want to worship them. If there are no gods, then you will be gone, but we'll have lived a noble life that will live on in the memories of your loved ones. I explained that his behavior is likely due to his upbringing, and it's likely she can change it. But if she wants to stay with him, she needs to tell him straight, this is who I am, either accept it or not, but don't think what I am is an illness that needs curing. After she talked to him, he supposedly realized he was wrong. I don't like this kid, not even a little bit. Story 22. I think my fiance's father likes me. My fiance joked that she thinks her dad likes me more than her. When I first met him, it was an art show that my fiance, who was my girlfriend at the time, was organizing. We were introduced there. I'm more outgoing than he is, so I started a conversation about martial arts. I had learned earlier that day he had studied Taekwondo for a few years, and I had been doing Chinese Kenpo and Jiu Jitsu since I was young. I'm 33 now, so we had something in common to talk about, which helped us get past any awkwardness. He ended up buying me a drink. Later on, I found out he's a big comic book collector, and so am I. He started giving me rare comics in perfect condition as gifts for Christmas and my birthday. Comics like Hulk number 180, Iron Fist number 1 and number 14, and I was so excited. A year ago during a tour, I took him aside and asked if I could marry his daughter. He got all excited, hugged me, and said, I've already accepted you into our family, but here's the official welcome. Ever since my daughter has been with you, I've seen her grow in only positive ways. Yes, you have my blessing. Story 23. I'm a single dad with two teenage girls. One night I came home late and found one of my daughters in my bed with her boyfriend. I guess they thought my king-size bed was more comfortable. I had a weapon leaning against the back door, so I grabbed it and walked into the room. I told the boyfriend to get out of my house and never come back. My daughter was more scared than he was. She still says sorry for that night, but she and the boy still see each other. I haven't talked to him since. He hasn't tried to apologize or talk to me. I told my daughter I won't trust or respect him until he shows he's worthy. Years ago, my other daughter had a similar problem. Not in my bed, though. Her boyfriend talked to me, said sorry, promised it wouldn't happen again, and we made a deal. He filled in a huge trench I dug to fix my broken sewer line. It took him many hours. Plus, he beautified my grass several times and was always respectful of my rules. I knew they do intimate things. I did when I was young. I can't stop it, but I can guide my daughter as the best way I can. I've been raising them alone for years. One is my stepdaughter. I made mistakes, but I tried my best. Girls are hard to raise as a protective dad. Any protective parent, really. I didn't have caring parents. My dad was neglectful. I never wanted to be like him. I know I've done well when I get hugs without asking. I love you texts without sending them first and when my oldest, stepdaughter, chose to live with me over her mom and biological dad. I still get emotional thinking about the years we've shared and how much it's changed me as a person. I love those girls more than I ever thought possible. I don't understand how a parent could feel so connected to their children and want to do the best for them. Story 24 I'm the daughter. I went through a really tough breakup in November. A friend I hadn't known for very long was there to help me through it. We started dating, but I never called him my boyfriend because I wasn't ready yet. One day, my uncle called me and asked if I could bring over a new guy, the new friend I was dating, because my uncle had a machine that needed a new part. Since new guy works with machines, my uncle wanted him to take a look at it. As I was explaining what the machine needed, I realized something. I'd never talked about new guy to any of my extended family. He had only met my father because I lived with him. So how did my uncle know I was seeing someone new? Know that he owns a machine shop. Know that he lives close to my uncle and even knows his name. It was my dad. i have been talking about new guy and couldn't stop, it seemed. My dad hasn't told me directly that he likes my new friend, but he doesn't need to. I already know. Story 25. I'm not a father or a daughter, but I am a son-in-law with a great relationship with my in-laws. When I was dating my wife and first met her parents, we traveled to see them. And I was going to stay at their house... 
I wanted to make a good impression and knew her father loves to grill. So I bought her mom a bouquet of flowers and her father two big bone and ribeye steaks. They gave him the steaks, she shook my hand, smiled, and we all started chatting in the backyard. My then-girlfriend started telling her dad that I liked to cook, and he said, Great, you can cook the steaks. He laughed, and she said something like, Don't put that pressure on him. And he started to take it back. However, I saw it as an opportunity and insisted on cooking them. Now the thing about my father-in-law is that, for a guy who loves to cook, his grill is not in good shape. He leaves it outside with no cover in the Midwest and has had it for about 10 years, so the grill is really unreliable. I was sweating over this grill, moving the steaks around, trying to cook them just right. It wasn't easy, but they came out perfect. We served them and an old friend of my wife showed up, tried the steak and praised my father-in-law, who corrected him and said that actually, I had cooked them. This guy was shocked. Apparently, I'm the only other person on the planet to ever touch the man's grill, which I'm glad I didn't know at the time because the extra pressure might have ruined me. It's now been over three years, and we still get along great. Story 26 My ex's dad loved me for a reason that wasn't very typical. He had a great job and made a lot of money, but since he lived alone, he had trouble spending it for a while. That changed when he decided he wanted the most ornate, perfect shower in the world. The shower in his bathroom was incredible. With jets everywhere at high pressure from all angles, the floor and walls were made of this gorgeous thick granite, and there was a sound system built into the walls. You could control the temperature of the water exactly, and the floor was even heated. One day I stayed over at their place while he was out of town. He'd gone out the night before and I was feeling a bit grimy, so I was on my way to the guest bathroom to clean up. The daughter insisted that I sneak a shower in his crazy luxurious shower, so I did. It was the best shower I've ever had, by far. I still dream about it. I've even thought about getting back together with this girl just for the showers. Anyway, after I finished my shower, I walked out wearing a towel. I said, that was incredible. And her dad replied, you enjoyed yourself, in a terse, you trespassed kind of tone. He'd come home early and scared me. His daughter was nowhere to be seen. So I said, sir, if you end me now, I'd end happy. It was perfect. Then he got all excited and started asking me what I thought about each part of the shower. He even got me a drink at 9 a.m. We started drinking and talking about his magnificent shower in great detail I see him every now and then, and he'll tell me about new additions to the shower and mention how I'm the one that got away. Story 27. I'm the boyfriend in the story. My girlfriend's dad couldn't be more different from me. I live in Maine, and I'm the unusual one. I'm a computer geek, I play guitar, I love playing PC games, and I have long hair. Her dad is the typical, always angry, sarcastic guy from the East Coast. I never thought I'd have a chance with him. The first time I went to meet him, I was really scared. More scared than I've ever been about meeting a dad before. It didn't help that my girlfriend warned me he's never liked any guy she's brought home before. Great. The first meeting was okay. He barely spoke to me. He's just quiet, she told me. She talked a lot with him. It didn't seem that quiet. He sat and talked with her and looked at me with squinted eyes like he was judging me. I excused myself to go to the bathroom. When I came back, I saw a PlayStation 3 under the TV with a good collection of games. When I went back to the deck where they were talking, I said to my girlfriend, You never told me your dad was a gamer too. He stopped squinting and finally asked me some questions. We talked about games for the next hour and a half. He suggested some games to me and I did the same for him. He had finally found something in common. Now we talk about music, games, cars, everything. We're actually pretty close now. And he calls me his future son-in-law, even though we're not engaged yet. I later found out that I was the first guy she brought home who didn't complain about the long drive or visiting him. The first guy who seemed to really care about her and made an effort to talk to him. For Christmas a couple of years ago, he got a PS4 and gave us his PS3. I play it sometimes, but I still prefer my PC. To thank him, I took all the old parts from my previous PC upgrades, put them in a case, and I'm giving him a gaming PC for the next holiday or special occasion. Well, if you like these stories, here's more. YouTube thinks you're going to love this. Catch you in that video.